At this point, this site page information is for those who are editors or publishers who are not able to create their own site page, but you are able to build that site page. We'll go through some of the steps here. You should be logged in as your role onto your website or a staging site. We're here on the home page. We'll recall that we can toggle. Our heavy black menu here on the top left on manage in order to show the content tab. Clicking on the content tab will take us back into the admin area where we can begin to find the content that we wish to edit so that we can build our site page. In the back end, of course, you have your filtering area, which you should see. You could search or filter all of the pages on your website by a specific title, should you have it. You could first filter by the certain type of content. For our purposes, we would want to find a site page. We could also filter by publish or unpublish. So that would depend on if we're editing an existing site page that has already been published. But in our case, we are looking for a, a site page that someone has created for us so that we can build. So we could look for unpublished and we could filter. The other thing we could find is that we could just look by name. I have filtered by site pages. So now that I, I can find my page as an editor, it is editor site page that someone has created for me. It also appears that they have changed the authorship to my name. By doing this, it means that I'll be able to see all of the pages that I have built or created in the moderation dashboard. So if you'll notice your drafts and content you created. I'm um, looking at the moderation dashboard. I look at the three columns. When I'm looking for things that I've created, it's that third column. If a web manager has given me authorship, I can find those items here. Again, I access that by going to the heavy black menu, selecting on yours would be an NCID, and then you could choose moderation dashboard. And now we'll go back to content. Here is our page, editor site page is the name. I would click directly on it. What will have happened once I manager, they have secured a page for me on the site. The important thing is that they've placed the page into a menu. And as we can see here in the right rail, the editor site page has been placed into a menu. It is in the farming and NC menu. So in order to begin to edit, once I've clicked on from the content area, I would go right above the title and select edit. This takes me back into the admin area. Remembering that this is split into two columns, the large left column is where we will begin to fill in the fields for our site page and the right column simply has draft information and if we wanted to put in information when we are editing a page we could certainly do that here perhaps i changed paragraph three or added a chart um, you could put information there moving into the columns here we first have our title which we're all aware of once it's been named for us, we'll want to keep that name so that we don't affect the menu because this page has been placed into the menu and it is the title uh, that helps in naming of that menu. So we'll want to keep whatever title was assigned the same. The first field we'll encounter is the main image field. We have an add media button, which is going to take us to the media library. Before we get there, I want you to note that there is helpful information below the add media button to help you determine the size of the image that you need to have, the size of the file that you're allowed to upload, and also the image file types that you're able to upload as well. We will see two methods for getting an image into our site page. The first is by using add media button. We'll do that in either case. Um, you'll see here that we have an opportunity to add a file from our own computer. I will demonstrate that one first. We all know how to choose a file. It obviously opens onto a folder on our computer or if you're at work, maybe your server. Either way, you would find the image that you were looking for. Here's some farmer jars. An important note is about accessibility. You may have heard this in previous videos, but one of the ways that we are responsible 
for keeping our North Carolina State Agency sites accessible is by adding alternative text to all photos. This alt text, we call it for short, alternative alt, alt text, gives those who are visiting our websites using screen readers an opportunity to have what the image is read to them. We provide the description that is read. It is a short description that also gives context as to why the image is there. In our case, I've chosen this picture of jars at a farmer's market. The training site that I work on happens to be about farmers. So we would want to give context about why I've chosen this image. I will go with brightly colored jars filled with preserves lined shelves at a farmer's market. So it's not just a dry description of what it is, but you want to give that person a context as to why it's on this page. Now, with that, it's important to note, and I think it's a neat feature, that the alt text will remain with this image. So if it is used anywhere else on the site, alt text will not be required as it will have already been typed in as the media image was uploaded to the site like I'm doing now. If, however, you find that you are uploading an image that actually does not have anything to do with the page that it's going to be on, perhaps it is decorative, maybe it's just a starburst, or in some cases it could be a logo, you may choose this area. You may select decorative image. And as noted, it's a, an opportunity to note that images are enhancing the appearance of the page, but don't convey any meaning. And this helps so that screen readers will not attempt to read this image for the person who is visually impaired. Moving further in, we have the opportunity to change the name if we'd like. I'm going to stay with Farmer Jars. We have two options. We can keep selected the option that we want this image to show in the media library. In some cases, you might want to insert an image just directly onto this particular page, but not have it shared with the rest of the community or your community who uses your website. Also, we're going to select that we would like the image to be published. Of our choices, we're going to go ahead and save and insert. Now we have the main image pulled into our site page. I will now repeat that process using the media library. So I'm going to remove the main image and then I'll go back in. You'll see I'm still given that first option to include an image from my own computer and we've already done that. Moving in, we're in the media library. We have those same filtering options that we saw on the content page, except for this time it's for images. We have a couple of options, publish or unpublish. I can search by a specific name if I'm aware of a specific <laughs> a photo that I'm looking for. I can look for a name. I can type in a name, apply the filters, and then I will be shown selections with that particular name in it. In this case, I chose farmers. Three images came up with the name farmers included. I could also, I'm going to clear this by deleting what I typed in, reselecting apply filters, and I could also simply scroll through. One of the benefits of Drupal 8 is that we have the ability to see thumbnails, which I think is another nice feature. So scrolling through, I have the option to select the image of my choosing. In this instance, I'm going to go with these baby sprouts and then I will insert selected. So now you've seen both processes for inserting an image. You can use the media library, which means at some point someone else or maybe you earlier already pulled images into the media library and we were able to go select. And then our first option was to go in and add our own image from our own device. Moving in, after the main image, we've got our title set. We reach the summary section. 
In this area, you will be required on site pages and landing pages, other content types. You can talk to your web manager about whether it's required. And um, this is an area where you're given an opportunity to tell users who would search Google or other search engines a few sentences about what's on this page. I will show you an example by opening a new tab on my browser. I will type in NCDIT. And you'll notice these sentences that show up right after the link is summary information. This, as I mentioned, gives users an opportunity to learn a few, in a few sentences, what they're going to see on the page. Going back, we will enter what we're going to see on the page here. Again, we were talking about farmers markets. Um, I, at first, I guess I chose the image of jars. We got baby sprouts here, so let's talk about farming. So there's a summary. It's under 150 characters. And just keep in mind, if you go to 151, you will be stopped and not be able to save. We now have summary information. The most important thing to note here is that this information will not show up to the public. Our main image will and everything else that we select, but summary information will purely be sent to that search engine in the case of someone searching for this page. Moving in, we get to the magic. Page content is the area where we will begin to build a site page. I say build because we actually construct it using paragraphs. Here you now see a list of the paragraphs that we can add. Tabs accordion, CTA card, NC map. There are examples of all of these on our NC Digital Commons support site, the site that you're likely on. Um, but so for now, we're going to start to build the page out. Our first item, we're going to go with the tabs accordion. This might not be the, you can choose whatever order a little bit later in this training. We'll see how we're able to easily shift the position of the paragraphs. Another reason I like to call it building because you can build those blocks of paragraphs within this page content area. We'll get into that a little bit a little bit later. Tabs accordion, as you know, are a feature on site pages that will allow you to expand and contract information. We'll see a sample here. This area is an accordion. You'll see that we have a plus sign that clicking expands to show information and you can put a lot of information here or a small amount. Um, I'll show you an example of a lot of information. Here is a tab that includes two paragraphs. We'll talk about these a little later. Um, but within an accordion, we were able to also include paragraphs. So these are a nice feature, like I mentioned, to put in quite a lot of information, but keep it con confined to a smaller space. That is what we will be our first paragraph for our site page. We will have a title. A lot of state agency use accordions as frequently asked questions. That's what we'll do here. The view mode, we have two options for the way we present this information. I've shown you the accordion. Once we finish, we'll change this to tabs so we can get to take a look at what that appears, how that appears. We have the accordion moving in. When you're creating the tabs for your accordion, you'll want to understand that the tab title is the question if you're doing frequently asked questions, and then tab content would be your answer. In our case, we're going to go with some farmer questions. Oh, I like this one as a new one. <laughs> what crops are best in NC? And we will go with our answer of sweet potatoes. I don't know for sure if that is the best, but it is one of the biggest. So we have asked the question in the tab title, what crops are best in NC? And now our answer will show up in the tab content area. Moving in, you now have two options for adding paragraphs within your tab, excuse me, within your accordion. The first type is a content paragraph. And this particular paragraph will show up 
sort of in the center of your accordion. We'll see that in a second. Your next option would be a sidebar paragraph. And this will show up to the right of any content that you have placed in the accordion. And those are demonstrated here. The content paragraph is shown as an NC map in this case. You have other choices. And then the sidebar paragraph is shown as an event card. Again, it shows in the right side of the accordion tab, which allows you to still put other content. You know, don't necessarily have to use a card or excuse me, a paragraph. You could just put text and then have your sidebar paragraph show. For our purposes, we will not add either of those. However, we will add a second tab because it would be a terrible practice to have a tab of one. Moving past the paragraphs, we will select Add Tab. Recalling that we have a question, and here is a pre-filled from what is waxy corn? And then I'm going to go with a cheeky answer. I don't know, but hopefully it doesn't wane. You get it? Wax and wane. Moving on, we have asked our question in the tab title. We have answered our question in the tab content. We've seen the content paragraph and sidebar paragraphs that we are not going to use. At this point, it's a good opportunity for us to save early and save often to take a look at our page so far. I'm going to scroll to the very lower left hand corner looking for the blue save button. Clicking on, clicking on save keeps the page in a draft state. Moving in, we'll recount some of the work that we've done. Someone already named our page for us, which is just fine. That is the title. And we'll talk a little bit later about how it's heading one. It's the largest font on the page. We have the main image that we selected. And our first paragraph of FAQs. We can expand our question, what crops are best in seed to see our answer, sweet potatoes. We can minimize and then maximize our second tab, which is, I don't know, but it, hopefully it doesn't wane my sad attempt at a corny joke. So we are beginning to build. Now we have more options. At this point, we know that we're going to add a text paragraph. I'm going to copy some text and then I will paste it in and we'll do a bit of work on that. Going up to my main menu. Just gonna grab some content. And I am copying it. Using the back button on my browser, I'm going back to edit right above my title. I have now copied text that I'm going to bring in. You could do the same. You may be copying from a Word document or you may be copying from an existing web page, maybe an old website. Now it's time to bring the content over. You would follow that same process more or less. Coming back into the page content, you can see we've begun our build. We already have our tabs accordion. The next paragraph we'd like to add is a text paragraph. It is already selected as the first option in our paragraph section, so we just simply click on add text. I would then scroll up to begin to enter my text and format this text. This should look familiar. It is a text editor, and if you use Drupal 7, you definitely recognize it. It's a text editor toolbar. I will tell you in a little while where you can get help on every one of those items or each of those icons will give you a little more information. What's important now is that as you are about to import text from another place into your Drupal page, it's important that you strip clean any code from another website or even this existing site before placing it into your page. As a practice, every time you are going to paste content into a text editor on your Drupal 8 website, you will want to go along your text editor toolbar. You'll want to find the two little clipboards. The one we are looking for has a T there. So it appears to be a small clipboard with a T on it. Hovering our mouse over, we will get a tooltip that tells us that we're going to paste as plain text. And that's what we want. 
You don't have to be a technical person, but you could understand that we want to strip out any existing code that might foul up our page here. That's all you need to know is it's important that when you're going to paste, you first click on the keyboard and the T to paste as plain text. The appearance of the blue rectangle tells you that you've done the right thing. It may differ in the buttons it's asking you to press there. You have no need to worry. As long as you have first clicked on that T, uh, excuse me, clipboard with the T and you see the blue rectangle, you are fine. You are now free to paste your content into your text editor. Moving on. As I mentioned, there is another website on where you can find information about this entire text editor. It is on the NC Digital Commons support site. Maybe the site you're on if you're looking at this on the site or you may have gotten this as a link. You can I will show you open a new browser, open a new tab on your browser. This site I've mentioned, of course, is the Digital Commons support site, which I'm sure you've seen. In the Drupal help menu, in the how do I section, we have a text editor how to, which will show you or talk to you about every button along the text editor. Tells you what it does. Great resource. Moving back into our page, I'm going to highlight just a few for you today. I have talked to you about accessibility. The two ways that we are responsible for accessibility on our Digital Commons websites are by adding alt text to images, which we already saw on our main image. The second way that we can be responsible as content creators and content editors is the use of headings within our text. Headings show up in their most basic as the size of fonts. In this instance, you can see that heading two, the font size is larger than heading three. And then as we continue to move into this area, headings get smaller and smaller. Headings perform a couple of functions for us. For accessibility, they allow screen readers to or know the text is organized as it's reading it out to its viewer. It actually provides the same function for us. It allows us to look at headings in order to quickly decide what parts of text we need to read on a page. You and I are responsible for affording that same opportunity to those who are visually impaired and using screen readers on our sites. There are lots of other ways accessibility is important and we are employing those behind the scenes. In this instance, I have already mentioned to you that the title, though we can't see it in the admin area, is always going to be the largest font on the page. Therefore, it has automatically been applied an H1 heading or header. I use those terms interchangeably in this training. So it has the H1, so we'll never have to apply that. However, we will apply the next size, which is H2. Here, I would select the text on which I want to apply the heading. Once I select it, I will go to the tool area that's named normal. And actually, normal is basically the style on the font that we're seeing already. The default font is called normal. It's a style. We will apply the heading too. You will notice now that it is much larger and certainly calls out this section of text. So we'll continue. It appears that fiscal impact is also about the same type of section, so I will also apply the heading too. The third section is called get more information. Again, I will apply heading two. Looks like there is a subtitle, which would then be a section within a section. You're familiar with this room if you use an outline in school. So then that would get the third level of heading and H3. In this way, we apply headings only in order. So what that means is I couldn't go with the heading three on products, but then decide that the second section would somehow become a heading six. As you can see, these are in order. When we had a subheading, it got smaller. If there were a subheading under connect with farmers in some way, that particular item would then get a heading four. In that way, 
just like you and I now, if I am here to just learn how to connect with farmers. The first item I see on the page is products. I don't need to read the whole paragraph. Same with fiscal impact. I can, my eye will get immediately to get more information. I'll see connect with farmers and I can be begin reading there. Again, we just want to offer an equitable opportunity for those using screen readers to be able to quickly parse through to the information that they need. Headings allow us to do that. Before we save our text editor here, text information here in our text paragraph, we will apply links. As we all know, links are what make the internet fun because we can jump from place to place, go from thing to thing. And on Digital Commons websites, there are a couple ways that we can get those links in. We will see three ways. We will insert a link that takes us to another website. We will insert a link that keeps us on our own page, or excuse me, on our own website. And we will also apply a clickable phone number. Over 50% of people who are visiting North Carolina State Agency websites are doing so on mobile devices or tablets. So it is important that we keep mobile first as also important as we talked about accessibility, designing our page pages so that they are friendly to those on mobile phones is a high priority. As we get into links, our first link will be an offsite link. To create a link in any case, you will need to find this little chain link on your text editor menu bar. Once you found that, you will select the text that you wish to link, select that little chain link, and you will get a lovely dialog box that grays out everything so you can focus right on it. This URL bar serves two purposes, so we'll talk about the second purpose later. At this point, you'll recall that we are doing an off-site link. Our best practice indicates that for off-site links, you don't attempt to type them in by hand. There is a high percentage of error doing that. So once you've selected, You've opened this dialog box. Our best practice indicates that you would then go to your browser, open a new window, type in the, the place where you want to get the link. In our case, it's the NC um, State Extension. Once you've located the page in your search engine, you'll want to go ahead and click on the exact page. I chose this link on purpose to illustrate that while our organization of NC State Extension is found, on the NC State University website, we would not at all just go with the home page to the website as the link. That would be misleading. Our link text, as we'll see when we get back, says NC State Extension. We want to give visitors the exact page that we promised. In this case, NC State Extension, I simply need to go into the URL and copy that address. I've done that, return to my open tab, and then paste this information into the URL section. It would appear that I've been given an error message. In fact, it's not an error message, it's information, no results. Linkit could not find any suggestions that this URL will be used as is, and that's okay. Underneath this URL section is a powerful module called Linkit. Linkit allows you to search your whole website for any pages or any type of content that's already there. In this instance, we did not need Linkit. Our link was off our website. Therefore, of course, Linkit couldn't find it because this is a whole other page on another website. So we're fine and we're going to choose save. Okay. Um, by getting a blue or purple link that lets us know, or I should say underline, uh, that lets us know that our linking has been su successful. We're going to continue before we take a look at what our page actually shows up as. We're going to go to the second type of link, which I mentioned will be within our site. That's an on-site link. Selecting this text, become a farmer. We're going to go back to the text editor bar selecting that chain link. And here is where now we can sort of unleash the power of Linkit. Um, like I mentioned, it's sort of an invisible module that resides in a number of fields throughout the website. 
in the case of the uh, site page, you will see link it here when you want to make a link to a page inside the website, the existing site. Um, to illustrate this, uh, what the power or the reason I think link it is such a nice feature is that all you have to know is one word from the page that you would like to link to. In this instance, let's go with the word farmer. My site, this training site is a lot about farmer. What you'll see is that a number of pages have come up. So even if I only recognize one word from the page or the content that I'd like to uh, link to, link it's going to show me all the items with that name in it or that particular word that I had there. Um, what you see on the screen, however, is not exhaustive of the list that we might have. I want you to know that LinkIt also will give you information on what type of content. In this instance, our first, if you'll look at this gray area right underneath the field, it's showing us that these links are site pages. Using the directional keys on my keyboard, I'm going to say that again. Using the directional keys found on a keyboard, I will use the down arrow to continue into this list that I've been given. Now you'll see that I've highlighted Farmer's Market Day, which is an event containing that same word farmer moving in. I now see that there is a web form with farmers in it, or the word farmer. Also a press release a landing page, a data table, and then there's also media. Media will let us know that it's either, you'll recall that in our media library, we can have audio files, documents, or images. In this instance, there's a JPEG as the suffix. So farmer jars is likely an image, and we already know that it is because I uploaded it twice here. Farmers markets, when it does not have a JPEG or PNG, we can assume that it's some kind of document. Okay, and then by then you should know what you're looking for. So LinkedIn is so powerful in that it really helps us to find exactly what we're looking for by typing in a single word. In this instance, I'm going to go with our first option, become a farmer. You will see that it changes the name of that into a node and includes the numbers. This should be of no worries for you. It's doing its job. You can now choose save. Again, we have another link. Uh, we recognize the link because the color changes to blue or purple and then uh, gets underlined. Why blue or purple? Purple means that the link has been followed before and because I trained this class often using that link, that's why it's showing purple there. And then the blue is often a link that has not been followed. Um, that's, or it could be that one is an offsite, one is an onsite. In either case, there is nothing that you need to worry about. As long as you have blue or purple, you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing. So let's go ahead and save this. I am going to show you a clickable phone number, but I will show that after we have already saved and taken a look at our page so far. Moving in to the lower left corner, you will always go here to save. It takes us back out to our page. We had, remember, the heading one, which we did not need to apply on our title. Our main image. Our first paragraph that we included, which was a tabs accordion paragraph. And now we have our text paragraph. More importantly, we've applied headings, which is helpful for our accessibility responsibility. But as I mentioned, it's also helpful for us. I talked about people viewing our sites on mobile devices, which means we're all reading faster and going through things much faster than we have in the past. And so adding headings also helps to for organize the page and format it so that as people are quickly scrolling, in my example earlier, they can quickly find what they want. Okay, so we added the headings. And then the last thing we did were add two links. The links are different in that one is an offsite link and it's noted by this tiny little box with an arrow. And you'll even see there's a little tool text that says this link is external. I happen to have the large um, uh, 
my mouse is changed to large, so you guys just see that big hand there. Um, by clicking here, what I want you to know is that it opens an entirely new tab on my browser while leaving the website that I was previously on open. So I can close that. Our next link you'll notice does not have the little box and the arrow. Clicking on it keeps me within the same tab and of course keeps me within the site that I was already on. So those are an off-site and on-site link. Our last link, we're going to talk about a clickable phone number. In order to create a clickable phone number, we need a protocol. In this instance, I'm going to take you out to the digital common site where we've been before. I'm going to grab the protocol from there and then come back and insert it so that the phone number becomes clickable. Just in case you don't know, clickable means that when I am scrolling on my mobile phone and I find that phone number, clicking on it will open my phone dialer and I am able to then dial the number right from there. I'm going out, as I mentioned, back to my browser. I'm going to head over to the Digital Common Support site. I'm finding clickable phone numbers. And then all I need is the protocol. Protocol means that text right before my 10 digit phone number that I'll need to add in order for that to be clickable. In this case, it's TEL colon plus sign, the number one, and a dash. That's all we need. That ahead of our phone number will make it clickable. So from this site, I will copy that protocol. I will go back in to the page. I now have a new tip paragraph, the text paragraph that we've begun to create. Selecting the phone number. Back to that link button. Pasting in the protocol and then simply add the phone number. You'll want to use dashes here only. Again, link it is not giving us an error message. It's giving us information. It could not find this phone number among all the content of our website. And this is not a surprise to us. So we can go ahead and save it. All right, that looks like I've created it. I'll go out all the way to the lower left corner to save it. And then here's my phone number. Because we are editors, we are not going to actually get to publish this page. So what you'll want to do is whenever you ask your web manager or a publisher to publish it, you'll want them to let you know when it's published so that you can be the first person to grab maybe your own cell phone and go ahead and click that phone number to ensure that it is actually clickable. I work on a Mac, so I can click on the phone number and you'll see that I get this nice little box here, dialog box that asks me if I wanna make a call from FaceTime. For me, that's confirmation that the protocol worked and the phone number would allow a call to be made and that's all we need. At this time, I'll also remind you that on your black menu bar here, you have an option will allow you, that will allow you to, to preview your pages on a mobile device. Clicking the drop down arrow next to the mobile icon will give a list of certain cell phones and tablets. Clicking on any of these will allow us to view this page as it would look on a cell phone. And that's really what you want to design your page to. If you are looking at your page on a desktop or on your laptop and you feel like something looks a little off, like maybe your um, text is kind of weird and you think you should add some spaces to clean it up, I'll caution you against that and have you first view it in this tool because more people are visiting on mobile phones, it's most important that your text appear easy to read there and that there aren't extra spaces there. 
that should be if there's a tie, you know, if there's a test like, hey, how does this look on a phone? How does this look on a desktop? You want to err on the side of the mobile phone. All right. So again, we have our heading one already applied to our title. We didn't have to do anything for that. We have our main image. We have our FAQs, which are in the form of an accordion paragraph. And then we have our text paragraph. I promised that I would show you something special about the FAQs in the accordion. You have the ability to change this feature to an accordion, or excuse me, to tabs if you would like without changing the content. I'm going to demonstrate that now by going back into the admin area, editing the tabs accordion paragraph in the view mode. I simply need to select tabs. I don't need to do anything further to the content. Resaving my item. You'll see that this has been changed now into a more horizontal presentation. Typically tabs are used with very small titles. You will see these with A through L, M through maybe S, and then T through V. That is the best use of it. As you'll see, you wouldn't have a lot of room when you have very long titles. However, there are two things I wanted you to know about this. Uh, first was that you could easily switch between tabs and accordion, which is pretty neat. But I also wanted you to know that when viewed on a mobile phone, tabs will automatically be changed into accordions. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that that's what happens to all of our text and images on a mobile phone. We have what I call this sort of stacking behavior that occurs. So in this way, your tabs show up better as an accordion. Just want you to know it's not an error if that happens. I, I en encourage you to be the first to check, you know, a page on a mobile phone and maybe you get there and realize, wait, I have accordions and I made tabs. Now you'll know that that's not a mistake. It's actually to help the viewer see it better. All right, so we've built out a lot of our site page here and we're going to continue with that. Scrolling back up, we're going to go into the edit area. Moving in. We're going to add files to our page. Um, you have another add media button. Super important to note, there are two areas in the site page admin area where you can add media. The first was in the main image field. Well, what I want you to note is that from this field, even though it doesn't say add media now, when you click add media from an image field, you will only be shown images, which makes sense. Selecting add media from this files field means that we're only going to be shown files. Why is this important? When you first log in to your new site page and you're ready for building, it has not it has been told to us that it is easy to click add media thinking that you were in the main image area. However, like I noted, you click there and realize, wait, there are no images. What's going on? And that's because you were in the add file section. Adding media or documents in this case, files, I use files and documents interchangeably for this training, is much like adding images. I will not go through adding files from your computer because we saw how to do that in the image section, it would be exactly the same process. We give you the same tool tips on the limits for the file size and then the allowed types. You have the same filtering area that you had for images, except of course this time it would be for media. And you could type in if you knew the specific name of the media that you wanted, or you could scroll in to look for it. Of course, you're gonna have the same icon because these are not images, there are no thumbnails. Um, so in this instance, let's look for the parking map for farmers, and then we will insert that selection. The first difference you might notice is that we have a green um, border around our add media button, which is basically encouragement for more. In the main image section, we were allowed only one main image, but here we can continue to add. 
What's important about using this section is that it is a neat place for you to add any kinds of files that are related to your content of the page. We encourage you to use this section in lieu of having links directly in your text paragraphs. You may do though, you may use those, but it is best to utilize this area for any files. I will add another. And in this instance, I'll take this opportunity. Let's go with farmers markets. To also encourage you to consider why you're including a file. Again, it's becoming ad nauseum. I'm going to remind you that over 50% of our visitors are on mobile phones or tablets. We will want to consider, do I want them to open a 14 page PDF or an Excel file that has six tabs on it? Data rates may apply for some of those people and we want to be careful about when it is absolutely necessary for us to upload files of those types. For PDFs, a good opportunity is if there is a one page PDF with no charts or graphs, could that PDF be instead made a site page? Good things to consider. Let's go and save so we can take a look at how these files show up for us. Moving in to the file section, we will get an icon to tell us what kind of file it is. In this case, both of our files are in fact PDFs. We'll get the name of the document, uh, the file type, again, PDF, the size, and then we can choose the date will show up for us. And it is important for it to have the size. It's a neat feature so that, like I just mentioned, people will have the opportunity to decide if that's something that they want to click. Um, but we encourage you as a responsible content creator on the digital common system to first consider if that information could be a page in lieu of a PDF. However, if you do need to add those files, that is exactly how you do it. Now you can see that the site page is a powerful content type. It can be chock full of a lot of information. Going back, we'll see one more element that we can add to our site page. We have the opportunity to include links to other pages, perhaps within our site, that would give more information about the topic at hand, or maybe links to other sites. So we already saw how to create a link within our text with the NC Cooperative extension. I could have also, and it is recommended, put that link down here. I'll go back up. I'll grab that address. And I can paste that right into the URL. And then again, I could give the link text. Okay, and see extension. And let's save it. The links show up in related content. Because it's an offsite link, it's still going to show up with the little square and the arrow alerting us to the fact that we're going to open a new tab and that this page will be off the site. So there it is, so much information within a single site page. Let's go back in and then I will just complete the last area of moderation so that we are, we've seen everything here. Moving in, You have a language item. English is already pre-selected. It's the only option, so you can ignore it. Drupal 7 document. Uh, this is something that you would speak to your local web manager to decide if this is something you should be concerned with. Key search topics is also an area that I would have you connect with your web manager about. I do not recommend that you place terms here before speaking with a web manager. And then you have the moderation options the same. We have two options as editors. We can save this as a draft, which is the automatic sort of default, or we can save it as needs review, which then alerts a publisher or a web manager that this item is ready to be reviewed and then published. I will show you the preview button while we're here. Selecting preview is another way that you can view your page 
before setting it as needs review. You can see that it shows a little larger than it actually appears in the draft version, and that's because we have our page placed in the menu, which gives us that right rail, which sort of uh, shortens our columns. Everything is here. I feel like saving as draft is a better option. If you decide to preview your pages here, you will want to simply ignore the view mode that shows here. There's some options that you simply don't want to click. It will maybe ruin your page. Um, but I wanted you to see what that does. So then we can go back to content editing. And then we would actually save as needs review here. If we needed to. And their page is all set to go. Moderation state again appears on this page. We've set it to the needs review state. And we could leave a message if we wanted to the person, hey, this is ready, or please double check my phone number or some kind of note. The last thing I'll show you in a site page is how you're able to move paragraphs into different order pretty easily. So let's try it. I'm going to go to edit. In my page content area, we have two paragraphs at this point. To the left of each is a little bit of an arrow with four directional arrows. I like to call these grabby bars. <laughs> so these grabby bars, as we're already being told in a tiny little tooltip, enable us to drag to reorder. So I'm going to drag my text paragraph to above my tabs accordion. Drupal will let me know that I have unsafe changes, and that's OK. At this point, I could save or I could continue to build, but we we are going to save. And now our text paragraph shows up right after our main image. And then we get our FAQs. It's that easy. I hope you enjoyed this module for creating a site page.